They want God. They want Jesus in their life. But not by the way we got it. Today was a, a rough day for me as on Facebook I got quite a ministry in Sydney, Australia with cutters. Severely depressed people. And most of their names are cut too deep. No hope, Mary. When will it end? That's their names. And one of the friends that we have gotten from Sydney cut too deep today. Over 300 cut marks on her arm. That's a lot of cut marks. And I just met her about five days ago through a friend that we met, through friends of Texas, wanted me to get involved with. And since the one person that we met, there's over 60 people now that we minister to on Facebook that are very suicidal. And all it took was someone to say, I care. Never met the girl, but every time she posts something, I'll say, life is hard. The pressures are great. But someone cares. And they say, who? I say, me. But this girl lost a friend through suicide and the pressure was so hard on her she cut too deep and that's what a cutter does the deeper you cut the more pain and release that you feel because you can cut an open wound and not feel anything so you got to cut deeper and deeper and she finally cut too deep that was the voice that was crying out why does it take someone four or five thousand miles away to say I care when someone right there in their own community doesn't? I, I don't understand that. But if that's all it takes, I'll do it. Part of the overcoming of suicide is talking about it. My, my wife has mental problems. And in her parents' generation, well, my parents' generation, you didn't talk about that. That was the, the mum word. You don't talk about mental illness. It, it's like cancer. You didn't talk about cancer. You didn't talk about prostitutes. We have a tremendous ministry in Champaign with prostitutes. I got in trouble at the church I was in before the one that we have is because I carried one into a motel that had passed out on the street. Someone saw me. Someone drove by, saw me carrying a prostitute in a motel. What do you do? Leave her, leave her laying there? No. The Good Samaritan. Pick her up. Get her help. Pay for her room. The clerk at the front desk walked with me down there helped put her in the bed, close the door, and that was it. Infuriated the church that a person, an elder in the church would pick up a prostitute. We gotta talk about it. We're talking about mental illness today. We're talking about suicide. Now we're not only talking about it, we're dealing with it. Because it's not the bad word. It's a bad act. It's not a bad word. Suicide hits hard in my house as my wife tried that about eight days ago. Carefully planned it. But she was so deep in depression, it's like Valerie. Medicine wasn't doing anything for her. Just deeper and deeper. A pastor's wife, she couldn't live up to the role of a pastor's wife. Her way out was suicide. 
had it carefully planned, but it was the wrong, she thought she did it on the wrong day of the week because she thought I was going to be away till eight or nine o'clock at night. Same day that Joanne and Sue came over, I'm going to pray with her. She wanted us all out. 12, 30, 1 o'clock or something. I came home at 5.30 and found her laying on the floor. She's barely breathing. Took 50, 45 to 50 clonazepam for sleep. She was so limp I couldn't even pick her up. She just folded up like a wet rag. I finally got her over my shoulder because if I called an ambulance, I could have got her to the hospital faster than what an ambulance could get to her. I finally got her on my shoulder, got her in the car, got her out. They had all kinds of machines hooked up to her. And I told the doctor, I said, if there's one person in this room that has any doubt, get out. I said, she will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord.